Hi there, come on in. I'm Fred Trost, and if you've got the springtime blues, the fishing really hasn't perked up yet, but you are in the mood for it, we're gonna take you fishing. We're gonna go far north in Ontario. In fact, we're gonna drop back to last summer when the fishing was hot. We're gonna go after some big walleye on the Attawapiskat River. Pym Island is the name of the camp, the northernmost camp in Ontario. We're also going to go turtle trapping, a summertime activity where we get the great ingredients for an award-winning turtle soup recipe. All this and a lot more coming your way, so stay tuned. I'm Fred Trost, it's Thursday night. Time for Michigan Outdoors. Boarding a seaplane, you know what this means. We're going someplace that isn't likely to be too crowded. In Michigan, there's no fishing holes that we can't drive to, and Carl Salling has probably driven to most of them. He's leading our entourage of family sportsmen on this trip to northern Ontario. Here's my 21-year-old son, Zach, settling into his seat for the hour and 20-minute flight. The movie is airport, I think. <laughs> no, no in-flight movie on this trip. My dad makes the third generation of trosts who are heading north to Pym Island, a secluded fishing camp on the Attawapiskat River in northern Ontario. Now, if you get out a map, look north, way north of Sault Ste. Marie. The only way to reach it is by plane, seaplane. There are no airstrips that far north. In fact, Pym Island is the northernmost fishing camp in Ontario. Nobody flies further north in this province to fish. Here's my 15-year-old son, Jason, gazing at millions of acres of trees, tundra, lakes, rivers, and marshes. No roads this far north, so you know the fishing pressure is minimal. The Attawapiskat flows into the Hudson Bay, meandering its way east, seeing moose feed on its water weeds and eagles feeding on its fish, and the occasional seaplane using its surface as a landing strip. Carl Salling is from Misik, where he taught school for a number of years, owned a canoe livery, did outdoor writing, and finally got into the booking business. In Season Adventures is his business name. He hooks up sportsmen with trips all over North America and in other countries as well. It took us several trips back and forth from the plane to shore to unload all our gear. See, the pilots don't like to dilly-dally because flying this far north is very expensive. When an airplane has its engine running, time is money. The spruces made the camp on the riverbank shaded, although shade isn't always desirable when the mosquitoes are out. They do tend to get thick up here, which is why the cabins always have those pick mosquito repellents burning inside. On the water, though, the wind keeps the bugs at bay, and I was able to stretch out and relax while I drove. A burned out peninsula shows the effects of a lightning fire. It started and stopped naturally. Carl and his 10 year old son, Mike, wind their way upstream. This is one hazard of river travel, submerged rocks. Of course, there's the danger of flipping a boat, but that isn't really likely to happen. These aluminum, aluminum boats are tough and quite stable. But ramming the shaft and propeller of the outboard motor could ruin the engine or disable it at a very inopportune time. And here I am with white knuckles going through a rapids is always touchy, especially if you've never been through there before. But we made it, the outboard motor made it, and we continued looking for a deeper, wider area of the Attawapiskat that might contain big pike or trophy walleye that wouldn't be found in the shallower rapids. Oh, that one's behind us. This week was a father-son trip. Carl and his son Mike, my dad, and my son Zach and Jason made it a special trip into the Ontario wilderness. Finally, cameraman John Ford and I caught up to the rest of the pack where my dad had an encouraging report. Oh, we we're just filming along the way. Caught uh, anything yet? Huh? Caught anything? Yeah, we just got three. Uh, three oh, here. great. And Zach and Jason got. Uh, a great midday report. Fish being caught at a steady pace. For walleye, a favorite lure was bombers. The blue seemed to be a killer color and it was those big 10 pounders we were looking for. Ooh.
Well, it's not huge, but these fish up in this headwaters here, this doesn't look all that big, does it, John? In the current, every fish felt bigger than it was. Oh! Look at that. Came right off of the bomber. I'm pleased with that. Oh, that's a nice, nice walleye. It's a lively walleye. Hmm. Well, we'll put him on the stringer. The spines on walleye fins are only one hazard to avoid. Look, you talk about the teeth on a walleye. Think they don't have teeth? Look at that right there. Can you see that? Sure. Look at those. Those are fangs. In Canada, these are the fish they call pickerel. Sometimes they're called walleye pike, but everywhere walleye is a good reason to be called to dinner. They taste delicious, especially fresh out of the river. That is, if you can get them out of the river. Not too bad. Come on up here, Wally Gator. Oh! What well, happened, Zach? What can you say? I don't know. I didn't have him hooked that good in the first place, so. Well, fortunately, Zach, there are plenty more where that one came from. Same. I tell you, this, this is fast and furious action here. Switched over to a smaller, I think it's a Bill Norman type of lure. Look, right in the lip. I like it, I like it. Good eater. What do you think, John? How many of these should we be keeping? Well, I think about six. About six a piece. Yeah, just in case. You know, even in northern Ontario, the fish can shut off about the time you want to start saving them for dinner. So we learned to keep the first ones we caught. Oh, oh, oh that's a dandy. Well, that is a nice one. Oh, wow. What a fishing hole this is. Well, my dad netted Pat's eight pounder that is. topped off their stringer. Look at that. You can catch fish like this in Michigan, sure, but the adventure of flying to northern Ontario is the call of the wild, something that adds to a fishing trip, especially when you take the boys of the family. And this is really getting away. Up here, the only civilized noise that broke the silence of the wilderness was the friendly call of our outboard motors. Here's a March 15th walleye of a year ago. 12 pounds, 5 ounces, caught in Saginaw Bay by young Ken Ayers from Pinconning. The hot pond produced this 30-incher at the end of May for Jared Bellinger from Clio. Now, Jared is four years old, probably younger than that walleye. Proof of big salmon still. It's a 29-pound Chinook taken by Mike Ayers in Lake Huron. And Dan Lyons from Spruce bagged a gobbler with an eight and a half inch beard from Alcona County. Well, here's a beautiful 10 point buck taken in Calhoun County by Vern Avila from Battle Creek. It has 10 and a half inch tines. Gary Goodenow from Milford took two bucks on opening morning from the same blind in Aranac County, the largest, this 10 point. And speaking of two bucks from one blind, Ken Truesdell of Plymouth bagged an eight point in the afternoon of November 15th in Ontonagon County, his second buck of the day. I had shot a six pointer at 10 minutes after eight and uh, it started raining and I thought real hard about going and getting warm, but I stuck it out and about 2.15 I heard a grunt coming through the woods and looked and there he was, had his nose right on dough and let him have it right there. Man, so you got two bucks. Yeah on opening day. This one, the biggest one, an eight point with a 20 inch spread. Yeah. Ken, you did good. Ken Truesdell from Plymouth. How about that for luck? Well, it's not just luck. Kenny Truesdell used good judgment in picking this spot. Reason enough to name him our Michigan Outdoors Whitetail Hunter of the Week. Kidney harness, the seat harness, and the shoulder harness. What are they used for? These three types of harness all have snaps which clip to big game fishing reels and are worn by deep sea anglers to help absorb the strain of long battles with fish.
A good bass lake, a good fishing lake, and people actually swim here too? That's right. We swim in it quite often, and uh, as you can see, some of the neighbor people around here, they swim in it. It's a good swimming lake. Do they know what Craig Cinda does in this lake besides fishing and swimming? A few of them do, but I'm sure the majority of them don't. If they did, I think they'd have second thoughts about going in there. Craig Cinda traps turtles, snapping turtles. This is one of the traps that you made with a couple of the turtles you've trapped. Right. Now these snappers are dangerous. Oh yes, quite dangerous. I mean, let's uh, take them out here. You got two of them that you've trapped. Go ahead and pick them up, Craig. Yeah. Well, that was no big deal. You always handle them by the tail? Yes, yes. Hmm. Are these average size snappers? Or yeah, they... this one here is your average, what we mostly get right here. The, you get a few that are in the 30 pound range. I get, that... You could just go ahead and set them there? Sure. If they don't Snapping fight, they might fight being up there fight like that. Fight with each other? Yeah. And I can guarantee the little one's gonna lose. Okay, now to pick it up, now this is kind of strange, folks. This, this feels like, uh, I don't know what it feels like. It's prehistoric. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sort of like leather. So right. Imagine like a dinosaur. Right. There he is. Now, I don't want to touch his nose with my finger. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it by any means. You don't want to get within six, seven inches of them. Hmm. They are very mean. What about these claws on the back? They use those for digging into the banks and whatnot like that. They burrow down in the wintertime. They smerge during the winter and they hibernate just like a bear. They bury hmm. themselves in the mud on the bottom of the lake. Boy, those are some claws. Yeah, they can they can scratch up pretty good. Now, a snapping turtle can't pull its head all the way back in the shell, right? No, no, no like their shell tortoise. is smaller than what their body is. Is there any way we can show why they call it a snapper? Sure there is. They'll bite this stick. Right, right, they'll bite it real hard. Will they bite it in half? No, they won't, no, they won't. That's, that's a belief that isn't true on you hear about people saying that they'll snap a broom handle and whatnot like that, but it's just simply not true. Actually, they have a hard time snapping a regular pencil. Hmm. They just, they're more of a bite than they are of a snap. I wouldn't want to have my finger down no, there to find out, but. Go, cool. well, give it a try, which. Okay, this one here, he's pretty ornery. Usually. Well, he isn't. Oh, okay, he just takes a little taunting. Yeah. But look at the at, at yeah. the mouth. Yeah. You say now th those are actually. I'd sure like to point it out with my finger, but I'm not going yeah, to. to keep them away because they do. They stretch out a good eight inches. They're razor sharp. Oh yes. Teeth? Oh yes. There isn't a teeth. It's one set, top and bottom. Like that a is, bill. It's like a bill, more or less, and it is sharp. As you can see, it has. It's almost like a chinook salmon on there. See the the a kite on the front. Right. Oh boy, I would imagine if that got a hold of you. They won't so let go it, either. It, it could snap off to the side here. I don't want a monkey with it. Ooh, he's opening yeah, his mouth. He's, yeah, he, he, he'll go match you if he gets a chance. But not this far. No. Hmm. See, they are pretty uh, seedy looking critters. Jeez, old <laughs> Pete, that's, holy cow, did that scare me. Oh. <laughs> yes. They are quick. A lot of people don't quick. think, they, they think of a turtle as being slow, but. You see, he's getting up on his haunches. He doesn't right like now. to be pushed like this. No, and he will turn around, so you might want to be careful with it. So he could even reach me like this? Right, he can he can turn pretty quick. <sighs> People don't realize it. So you've been trapping these for four years, and this is the type of trap that you always right, use? Right, right. It's basically a minnow net. Minnow trap more or less is what it is. Same principle of that. Just made out of chicken wire. So this right. is where this is where the turtles swim in. Right. On this side, and then they they can't get back out. They can't out. get out. What do you bait it with? I bait it with rotten chicken. I put chicken in a coffee can with water and let it sit out in the sun for three days. And it gets bad, very bad. But that seems to work better than the fresh. A lot of people say huh. use fresh, but I, I use the rotten. So we have, where do you put it in, now this lake? Right. People, of course, they swim around in front of their right. homes and so on. Right. W would there be snapping turtles right along Oh, sure, this area? sure, sure there is. That's where we put them. We put them one right out there on that point there, and we also put them over there on the other side of the lake. Hmm. Along shore? Along the shoreline, right. Did Roughly about two foot of water. Facing any particular facing direction? Or? The opening facing out on it. And then we also anchor them down. I'll anchor it down to the bottom. That mm -hmm. way they can't roll them out. How many turtles have you taken out of this lake in four years of trapping? Uh, Roughly about 40. About 40 out of and here. And there's plenty left. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. What's the biggest? The biggest was about 36 pounds. Why, you know, you don't hear about people getting hurt by them. 
I, I, I've always wondered about that. They must, there must be kids who monkey with them and get bitten. Oh yes, I'm sure there is. I, you know, I've never been bitten by one, but I'm, I'm sure that there has been people. I've stepped on them before swimming, and nothing has ever come of that. So well, I've I heard, I've heard that people do feel them in the mud and, and lift them up. Yeah. The underwater, they won't bite. Right, that's what I've heard too, but I'm not, not that brave. Not good enough for me. Not, not no. that brave. I prefer using the trap that way. All I got to do is handle them by the tail. So the regulations are in effect. You have to have a fishing license? A fishing license. You have to have uh, a trap such as this or similar. There is no hook and line unless mm -hmm. you use a fishing pole and are keeping an eye on the fishing mm -hmm. pole. There's, uh, like I say, the limit of 10. And it doesn't matter if it's snapping turtle, mud turtle, any type of turtle. Jeez, oh, Pete. We get quite a few people that ask us to get them out of their ponds and, and small lakes such as this one here because they do eat a lot of the, the fish, the ducks. Oh, they'll eat baby ducks and lots of them in the spring. And the big ones will occasionally grab a full-grown duck that dangles its feet under the surface. You're looking at a home video right here taken by Gary Yonkers of Portage, Michigan, who saw a turtle grab a full-grown mallard. So he ran to his home for the video camera. When he got back, two huge snapping turtles were fighting, undoubtedly, over the duck. Why trap turtles? Not because they're so good to eat. And according to Craig, the big ones can be a bit tough, and they need to be parboiled first. This one here, he's good fried or in the soup. Mm -hmm. But you get the real big ones and they're strictly soup material. Hmm. It really takes quite a bit of, of boiling time to get them down to where they're, they're tender enough to be able to chew on one. I bet your turtle soup recipe could even win an award. Yeah, I bet it could. <laughs> <laughs> Craig Sinda's soup was an award winner in our Fish and Wild Game cooking contest with Snapping Turtle, one critter you never want to scratch behind the ears. <laughs> This is a winner in our cooking contest. Oh, turtle soup, always a winner with me. Oh, and Craig, Craig... Senda, of course, from the marsh to the table. That, isn't that a strange looking piece of meat? It it's, is. It doesn't look like our venison pieces or fish pieces or anything. Well, the only thing you can say about turtle is it looks a lot better that way than it does on the hook. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm just gonna go ahead and boil the pieces of turtle and you do wanna add just a little bit of oil to the hmm. water. I'll and it, you have to skim it constantly because the fat and the oils will come to the top hmm. and so you're, all through you're, the cooking. So what you're trying to do is tenderize the turtle Absolutely. meat. Absolutely, yep. And then once it's done, you're just going to go ahead and make your basic soup recipe. you got potatoes and mm -hmm. celery and onions all, and All tomatoes. the normal things you put right, together in a, right. in a chowder or a All soup. goes back in the same pot, which really makes it nice. Turtle soups, traditionally, as I recall, aren't simple soups. I mean... Uh, you know, they're not that difficult to make, but they have a lot of ingredients. Yes, they Mushrooms do. Mushrooms yep. and a lot of fresh ingredients. Celery. Yep. Tomatoes. Perfect this time of year when everything is coming out of the garden, mm -hmm. too. And so then for the base, we're just going to use tomato soup mm. and a little bit of uh, tomato paste for thickening. Mm -hmm. Oh, I like that. Those, those are favorite ingredients with me anyway. <laughs> I love that tomatoey flavor. And the only spices Ooh. we got is crushed red pepper and a couple of bay leaves that you will take out later. Great choice. Oh, absolutely. And the bay leaves? Bay leaves, yep. Then I, you do want to take those out. It's amazing out. that you could taste much of this. You know, you know what that looks meat. like? That looks like a, a, a beef barbecue. Right. What it looks yep. like. Yep, but it tastes a lot different. Has a flavor all of its own. And then it just goes all, just let that all boil all the way through. Hmm. And cook that, steep that. And you know, the funny thing, I, I, when we tasted this recipe, Bob Garner didn't say a word. <laughs> Did, did the slurping sound, I mean, give you any indication of what I was doing over here? Well, I've been when I'm being quiet, that's because I like it. I oh, just want you to know that you taught me well. I've got a clean mm. bowl club here. Mm -hmm. oh, no kidding. I'm on my yes. second bowl. She's in I'm my act my right now. <laughs> mm -hmm. It is so good. Mm. I got to admit, the turtle, I can't really taste, you know, the different, like the different parts of the turtle. Like some the, taste like chicken, some taste like beef. Different, yeah, colors. Mm -hmm. No, you can't taste them. Well, this isn't a recipe, really, that features the turtle. I mean, turtle soup is, oh, is always good. Everybody will eat it. It is so but this, tender. But this, this is, this is just mm. a good, good type soup recipe, like gazpacho, like mm -hmm. we were talking about earlier. But it doesn't taste like beef. You know, no, it's, like it's it, got its own flavor. Mm -hmm. No, it's, it is excellent. And it's like gazpacho soup heated mm -hmm. up. I love well, it. We got we to gotta tell people they don't have to necessarily get like a snapping it. turtle, though, to use this recipe because beef or venison, anything oh, will work well on it. Turtle is the best. Absolutely I like, delicious. I like this more than Garner does. 
Well, me too. I like it a lot more than you do. Oh, no, you don't. Oh, yes, I do. Oh, no, you don't. Yes, I do. No, you don't. Oh, okay, I get the last two more right here. <laughs> Where could you find this mouth-watering recipe? I tell you, this, this is Fast and Furious action here. Switched over to a smaller. Oh, you know what I forgot to mention in tonight's show on our outdoor calendar? Our Stroh's Fishing Awards Banquet this Saturday night. But the reason we didn't mention it is that it's sold out. Don't despair if you didn't get a ticket, though. We'll have interviews of the trophy fish on during our trophy book in the coming year. Next week, Wintering Whitetails Report. So join me right here on Public TV. Oh, oh that's a dandy. Oh, wow. What a fishing hole this is.